Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to go over the uh, reverse wiring technique, uh, sometimes known as the hairpin technique. It's a useful technique to know uh, for wiring extremely angulated side branches, especially when the origin of the side branch is just distal to a severe main branch stenosis. The patient is a 70-year-old woman uh, with a remote mitral valve repair. She's been experiencing um, increasing exertional angina and had a markedly positive nuclear stress test with uh, severe anterior ischemia. Her cath showed a minor disease in the RCA and circumflex, and here is her LAD. As you can see, there is a severe stenosis in the proximal LAD uh, that is likely the uh, culprit. However, there is also a large diagonal branch which arises just after the LED lesion. The uh, diagonal has a very angulated, almost reverse takeoff uh, from the LED, and there seems to be a lesion at the ostium of that diagonal. Uh, this one is going to be a hard one to wire. I uh, engaged the left main with an EBU 3.5 and, and wired the LED with a BMW wire. I then tried my usual bag of tricks uh, for wiring difficult side branches. Um, first, a uh, hydrophilic wire with a sharply curved tip. Um, this uh, was not effective. I could not engage the diagonal. Uh, that LED lesion uh, just kept getting in the way. The other tricks uh, really didn't work either. Uh, the super cross angled microcatheter, which often works well, uh, was not effective in this case. A uh, dual lumen microcatheter, uh, microcatheter with a side port uh, for a second wire to get into the side branch uh, was also not effective. I suppose I could have also tried an LED blocking balloon. In other words, uh, gently inflating a compliant balloon in the LED to uh, deflect a second wire into the side branch. But I uh, did not try that technique here. Instead, uh, I decided to try the reverse wiring technique. The idea in reverse wiring is to tip a hydrophilic wire, kind of like a hairpin, and pass that hairpin tip beyond the side branch, and then pull back on the wire so that the tip engages the side branch on the way back. So it sounds pretty slick. Um, so how do you do it? Well, in the traditional version of reverse wiring, you take a hydrophilic wire, like a Pilot 50, tip the very end as usual, but then fold the floppy part of the wire about two to three centimeters from the tip. Uh, this creates uh, the hairpin shape. You then introduce the hairpin tip directly into your hemostatic valve uh, with the folded over end going in first. You then try to pass this hairpin tip into your target vessel and across the lesion. This can be quite tricky as it will be challenging to navigate a wire with a folded up, uh, folded over uh, hairpin tip. So it's also best to have the main branch wired with a separate wire um, beforehand so that in case uh, you end up dissecting uh, with your hairpin tip. Once you've crossed uh, your target uh, bifurcation, you then gently pull your wire back, uh, trying to keep the tip of your wire pointed toward the side branch. With some gentle manipulation, you should be able to engage the side branch as you're pulling back the wire. This can be quite tricky to do, actually. Once you've engaged the ostium of the side branch, continue to pull back gently. The hairpin tip will straighten out, and this will push the tip of the wire further into the side branch. You may need to torque very gently for this to happen. Once the uh, tip of your wire is deeper into the side branch, you can start advancing the wire further forward. Occasionally, you might need a flexible microcatheter, uh, like a fine cross or a caravel to help you, especially if the ostium of the side branch is calcified. Once you're satisfied with the positioning of your side branch wire, I will usually exchange it to a friendlier workhorse wire uh, using a microcatheter. Okay, so how did this work out for us? Well, again, I had a BMW wire down the LED. I used a Pilot 50 wire with a hairpin tip for the uh, diagonal. 
Uh, with a bit of manipulation, I was able to get my hairpin tip beyond the lesion. And as you can see here, uh, the tip was actually pointed nicely uh, toward the ostium of the diagonal. I slowly pulled the pilot pithy back, but had a tough time getting the tip of the hairpin to engage the diagonal. These things always seem to be a lot harder to do in real life as they make it seem to be uh, in, uh, in conferences. And um, finally, after several tries, uh, I finally got the tip of the uh, Pilot 50 wire uh, to engage uh, the mouth of the diagonal. And after a little more gentle pulling and prodding, uh, I finally got my Pilot 50 wire to flip into the diagonal. And once I had enough tip in there, I had no difficulty advancing the wire uh, further down uh, the uh, diagonal branch. The uh, remainder of the PCI was then quite straightforward. Um, I exchanged the Pilot 50 wire to a Pro Auto wire and gently dilated the ostium of the uh, diagonal branch. I then stented the LED, did IVIS, and post dilated the stent. And the uh, final andrographic result was actually quite nice. Uh, the patient was an outpatient, and she went home uh, later that day on dual antiplatelet therapy. All right, so. One of the difficulties uh, with the traditional version of uh, the reverse wiring technique is passing that hairpin tip across the main branch lesion. I've had a hard time doing it with this case, and it can be quite challenging. Instead, um, I could have made my, whole, my life a whole lot easier if I used the refined version of the reverse wiring technique. Uh, in, in this version, instead of forming the hairpin tip outside the body, uh, we use a dual lumen catheter and a distal side branch to form the hairpin tip in situ, inside the coronary and distal to the lesion. So here is how you do it. Um, as usual, you're going to wire the main branch with a workhorse wire. After you do that, uh, you pass a dual lumen uh, catheter, uh, such as a Suzuki or twin pass, over your main branch wire and position the tip distal to your lesion and the target uh, angled bifurcation, but also just proximal to another friendlier, straighter side branch. Next, uh, you pass a hydrophilic wire via the side port of your dual lumen uh, microcatheter into that friendlier distal side branch. Once roughly half of the floppy tip of the hydrophilic wire is in the side branch, you're going to push your dual lumen catheter forward, and this will naturally pull the tip of the side branch wire back into the main branch and form a U-shape. You're going to keep advancing your dual lumen microcatheter until the tip of the hydrophilic wire backs all the way out into the main branch. Once that happens, you draw your dual lumen microcatheter back, unsheathing the tip of the hydrophilic wire, which is now shaped into a hairpin tip. Nice. The rest of it is just like the uh, traditional reverse wiring technique. Uh, you gently pull the hairpin tip back uh, to engage and wire uh, the angulated side branch. Now, a nice bonus of this technique is that if you are unable to engage the side branch and your hairpin tip unwinds, uh, you can simply rewire the friendlier distal side branch and reuse your dual lumen microcatheter to reform the hairpin tip. All right, take home messages. Uh, we went over the use of the reverse wiring technique. Uh, it can be a little tricky to do, uh, but it can be effective way uh, to wire angulated side branches when other more standard techniques have failed, especially in cases where the side branch arises just distal to a severe main branch stenosis. We also discussed the uh, refined uh, reverse wiring technique, uh, which is nice improvement over the traditional technique and which forms the hairpin tip inside the main branch using a dual lumen cat microcatheter and makes it much easier to cross the main branch stenosis. Thank you for watching.